Hi guys, my name is Mark. I hope you're well and welcome back to r slash no sleep the story they keep people in cages If you're new here, why not consider hitting that like that subscribe button and maybe that notification bell and with that being said Let's get into the rest of the story much love guys part three so Lisa is still missing the place is still in lockdown and I haven't been allowed to leave they're afraid of getting her out I guess Besides the whole not aging thing and her taste in movies, Lisa has always struck me as the least harmful of the bunch. So I'm pretty worried considering how much they're freaking out about her possible breach. Even Fres didn't evoke so much panic out of the higher ups. Good news is, I have some free time to write out all of this. Besides Lisa being missing, I've still been going about the normal routine. Feeding, removing bones from Bill's cage, cleaning up after Fred's feedings. Speaking of which, the new Fred is a particularly messy eater. Or would it be drinker? considering I'm giving him blood. Cassie seems particularly aggressive since Lisa's disappearance. She tried more than once to bite me. The one that's been worrying has been Bill. I was feeding him yesterday and saw something moving around inside his chest as he downed a daily rat. Tomorrow is another move, or should be at least. I'm not sure what with a security lockdown. So, since I haven't much to write about in the event, I'll take a suggestion to tide you guys over. Some of you were curious about the personality of the people in the cages. Well, because I'm a person of the people, I'll tell you about them. Fred is usually very quiet. However, if he misses scheduled feeding, reminder is every seven hours, he gets exceptionally aggressive and talkative, making a lot of threats. My personal favourite had to be the time he told me if I was late feeding him again, he'd make a smoothie from my tendons. Overall, however, Fred's, when I've interacted with them outside of a hostile state, they're very polite and well-spoken. Cassies are less people, more animals. They don't speak much outside of grunts and growls. Personality-wise, they're as deep as a dog bowl. That said, they're also the least hostile of the bunch. Outside of feeding time, probably has something to do with the electrified cage. I even hand-fed one, well, wearing a thick leather glove, but still. Gave her some of my burger. Let's not tell TD, huh? So, while they're looking normal, if small women, they don't act like it. Mary's a religious nut. They're constantly praying or trying to turn someone into their religion. The current Mary is a pagan. She worships some ancient deity called Hasta. Always asking something about a sign. I don't know. They're interesting, but not much in the way of conversation. I tune them out most of the time. Bobs are a mixed, as is to be expected. Most are very prone to conversation. Typically it's the water cooler talk. You know, what happened at the game, or what happened on Game of Thrones, back when it was still coming on. I actually chat with them during my coffee breaks. They're pretty nice guys, you know. Ignoring the eye thing. But don't let that fool you. They've tried strangling me a few times. That's why I have the stun gun. Earl is Earl. Not much to say. He always has his nose buried in the newspaper, so he doesn't talk much. Chads can't speak due to the whole black substance from every orifice when they speak issue. Before she went missing, Lisa was your typical six-year-old as far as personality is concerned. She even had an imaginary friend. She called him Mr. Abba. Her bear she called Bezel. Interesting names, but hey, she's a weird kid. Or at least, she's a strange whatever she is. I have no opinion on Bill, as he's still rather new. Oh shit, TD is getting us all together for some kind of meeting. I'll update later. Update. Okay, so TD gave us the rundown. When, and if we find Lisa, she's to be given restrictions for the time being. Furthermore, we're to never reference her imaginary friend or a teddy bear directly from here on. As for the doll, it's still in the cage with Bill last I saw, but no one else has noticed or cared about it, besides me and the caged. Mary in particular holds the doll in reverence it seems. More weirdness from this place I suppose. The security are still doing a full sweep to find Lisa, but so far no luck. I haven't mentioned the thing inside Bill to TD yet. Seems he has a lot on his plate right now. Never come to your boss with a problem, only solutions. Heard that in a movie. TD also gave all of the people with clearance, i.e. everyone here presently, the files on each captive. I haven't gone over them yet, but I'm certainly intrigued to find out why they locked all these people away. Update 2. In the middle of the last update, shots were fired. We found Lisa. She was eating a member of security. It was a mess. His limbs were arranged in a heart shape. She had ripped off his scalp. When they found her, she was dipping his kidneys in ketchup like chicken nuggets. They naturally opened fire. She didn't so much as flinch. 
The man's intestines were draped around his neck like a scarf and his scalp was on her head. I nearly vomited when I saw it. I'm a bit fuzzy on the details, but somehow we managed to secure her and place her back into her cell. So that's what she eats it turns out. The doll was in a cage when she was put back. I didn't mention it to anyone, but the doll, which I told you had cat paws in place of his hands, well, one hand was now a human one, with a tattoo distinctly similar to the poor bastard Lisa was just eating. I'm going to read those files. I'm done not knowing what I'm dealing with. Update 3, well, I don't know much more than I did previously. I don't know what they did, or why they all fit into certain categories. Most of the files were redacted. This feels like a waste of time in all honesty, but it's a start. The only one that wasn't completely redacted was Cassie, and she's human in appearance only. She's some kind of succubus or siren or something. I'm not sure, but she's quite literally a man-eater. The pound of meat isn't any kind of meat, it's human meat. I still don't know where they go every three days and why the care instructions are so specific. I'll keep you guys updated. Tomorrow's transfer day. Part 4 So I came into work today and TD was in a panic. Why? Eight skin was found in his cage, not his body, just his skin. As for the doll, it's still with Lisa in her cage. I wanted to tell him about it, but one thing at a time, you know. Today's transfer day, and in a few hours one of the cage will be leaving. Who? I have no idea. But some of you suggested I attempt talking to the current Mary about her religion. Maybe she knows something we don't. So that's what I'm going to do. I sat in front of the cage in an old wooden chair. Mary, as usual, was deep in prayer. She spoke some language I didn't understand. I cleared my throat and she looked up. Have you seen the yellow sign, she asked, smiling ear to ear. She was a native woman with an accent that seemed a mix of Australian and American. Aboriginal, maybe. I shook my head. Why didn't you tell me about it? Only pausing for breaths, Mary went into great detail about a patron entity, otherwise known as the King in Yellow, and in some places, simply the Yellow. Hastor was a patron of shepherds to some, to others, an unfamable darkness. I nodded, as if understanding, but truthfully, I was more confused than I was previously. Finally, I asked, Why are you here? Why are you in? I pointed to the cage. There. I don't know, she said, her voice faltering for the first time. This Mary was a regular chatterbox, and this was the first time she had fell silent. What about that doll, the one the little girl has? She eyed the doll warily. Lisa was nose deep in the colouring book, but the doll looked right at her. I don't know. I thought at first to be a vessel of Hasta, but she trailed off. What that crazy bitch is saying is that doll is something else, Earl spoke up, for the first time in what seemed like ages. Why are you here then, I asked, turning my attention to the moustached man. He shrugged. Jaywalking, he replied, going back to his newspaper. Mary spoke again. The doll. It has darkness, similar to the king, but not quite, she said. It was as she said this, the doors opened. They wheeled in the new captive. And as they approached Mary's cage, her eyes widened in fear. They shoved me aside roughly and unlocked her cage. They dragged Mary out as she dragged her nails into the ground with such force that it left a mark in the floor beneath her. They strapped her in, and as she cursed in that unknown language, they wheeled her away. Her replacement, a nun, came soon after. Well, so much for that lead. Security had been on high alert since the old man, we're guessing anyway, shed his skin. I was reprimanded by TD for talking to the pagan Mary about her religion. He didn't punish me or anything, but let me off with a warning. She said that doll had darkness, and I believed her. I also talked to Lisa a bit today, asked about Mr. Abba. She said his full name is Donald Abba III. Never heard of an imaginary friend having a first and last name. I don't know. I have to focus on the job, so I'll update you guys later. Update? So I told TD about Lisa's doll. What she said worries me. A lot. He said he didn't see any doll. That's unnerving. So not only is there the possibility of a sentient doll, but now I'm the only one who can see it besides the caged. I've conducted interviews with the rest of the cage since Mary's transfer, besides Cassie and Chad, because, well, they can't really speak. Fred was first up. He said he was there for simply being him. This particular Fred was so overweight, he was tired from standing too long, so he sat on the floor of his cage. I finally asked, What do you know about that doll? Gesturing to Lisa's cage. About as much as you do, I suppose. Showed up in her cage one day. Showed up? How did I miss that one on the monitors? Yes sir, the woman, the one that was moved today, well she wouldn't shut up about it, for a few hours at least, then she avoided it like it pissed on her shoe or something, he snorted. 
Where did you come from? Thurman, West Virginia originally, he stated matter-of-factly. Moving on. Earl didn't provide much more info than Fred, but what he did tell me caught my ear. He claimed to be from Nazareth originally. He also mentioned a woman named Delilah who stabbed him in the back a long time ago. The new Mary was too frightened to be talked to due to the circumstances of her surroundings, and Lisa, well, I'm not talking to her again. Kind of pointless considering she's technically six. That just left Bob. Bob is still claiming to be an investment banker from New York. Didn't provide much information on the doll, so I changed the subject. What's with the coins? Oh, these. He pointed to his bloodied sockets. They're my lucky coins. Mm-hmm. Yep, whatever you say, Bob. I returned to my office and poured a cup of coffee. I nearly had a heart attack when I turned around and saw the fucking doll sitting on my desk. It was not there when I came in. Pinned to his chest was a note scribbled in crayon. It read simply, look up. I don't know why I followed this instruction. On the ceiling, looking down at me was me. The person was duct taped to the ceiling. His eyes were gouged out and carved into his forehead was another message. Stop. I blinked and the corpse and the doll were gone. I ran to the monitors and saw the doll back in Lisa's cage, looking directly at the camera. I'm starting to think this isn't worth $500 a day. Part 5 Sorry about the wait. Been busy a few days since Bill slipped out of his skin. Speaking of which, it's still undetermined whether or not Bill could be considered the same being as whatever crawled out of his skin. Some of you suggested I tell TD, and I very much intend to. Just have other things to deal with. Also, there were no transfers today, which is weird considering it happened every three days for at least a decade. I've been having trouble sleeping. Every time I shut my eyes, I see that fucking doll. I've seen it around my house, which was worrying to say the least. I've done more interviews with the inmates. So, as I can put it together, here's what I've gathered about who or what these people are. Fred was born, according to him, around 1836. He also claims to have committed several murders since the 1880s, several victims, including two in the December of 1968. He cites those as his favourites. He's nearly 200 years old, by his own count. Mary claims to be a nun, a woman of the cloth. She said she was born in 1883 and did what she did for the Lord. Apparently she had convert the wealthy in order for them to give their money to the church. She also said she's no Catholic, but a Greek Orthodox. Chad, I gave a notebook to communicate with. Why are you here? Chad wrote, Troubles with women. We've all been there. I followed up by asking, Where were you born? What year? His response, I was born in Burlington, Vermont, 1946. He certainly didn't look that old. I thanked him for his time, gave him his green liquid and moved on. Finally, we have little Lisa. Lisa insistently claimed she was born in 1681 in Massachusetts. She also said she misses her cousin Betty. That's all I got out of her before she returned to a colouring book. It doesn't faze me that she's easily the oldest of the bunch. Hold on a second. I saw something in the camera. It's much bigger than the cages. It's maybe seven feet tall. It's completely devoid of hair or pigment. What caught my eye, however, was the oxygen tank on its back. I'm looking at number eight. I quickly pressed the alarm button and looked back up at the camera. Its face was right in the camera and it was definitely the face of Bill, grinning ear to rotting ear. Even in the camera, I could tell how decayed his teeth were. The feed cut out, and then the power. A couple of seconds later the feed turned back on, but the lights didn't. I'm guessing that was an extra security measure. I grabbed the weapon at my station, locked the door, grabbed my security walkie-talkie and waited. Weapon aimed at the door. Had to be four, maybe five hours before TD entered the room. The security team did show up, two hours ago in fact, but they had vanished without a trace. Missing? What do you mean? I said. Feeling sleep deprived, even though I had plenty of sleep. They arrived on site and didn't check back in. Sighing, I scratched the back of my head. I had it with this secrecy shit. What are we keeping here? I finally asked as TD studied the monitors. Monsters, he said. Matter of factly, things that have to be dealt with by any means necessary. He paused. What's that in cage seven? The doll. Yes, the doll. Where did it come from? It, uh, it's been there for a few days now, since eight came in. Why are you telling me this now? He demanded with a look of fear and anger etched across his face. Well, between lit and I stopped myself. Since seven went missing, then eight, I figured it rated low on list of concerns. He sighed, the power was cut, there's a backup generator. Grab the gun and come with me. My superior ordered me, 
I guess I didn't have much of a choice. I have to stop here for now. Not a good idea to keep writing. What with the lights being out. Update? Alright, I'm still alive. Well, barely. Four of them are broken out is the thing. I'm assuming at one point was eight. Mary, Bob and Chad are all under containment. By their own choice no less. The building is in full lockdown and he ordered every available security personnel to come immediately. I intend to post this yesterday, but you know, life and death, monsters want to eat my bones. Priorities, you know. TD and I managed to restore power, but I can't leave. Not that I would go out too, with those guys out and about. I'm currently in my office with TD, who's watching the monitors. I filled him in with a whole duplicate of me on the ceiling thing, and the doll. His walkie-talkie sprang to life. I'm not sure, but I believe they said. Cerebrus is on site, doing a full sweep of Sector 6. We'll be in your position in two minutes. TD breathed a sigh of relief. Cerebrus? Cerebrus? Thank fuck. What's Cerebrus? I asked. They're going to get us out of this. He grabbed his walkie-talkie. Roger that, Cerebrus. We're in security room Foxtrot. Subjects are out of containment with the exceptions of 4, 5 and 6. You have permission to terminate any of the others on site. Also, be advised there may be two hostile entities with subject 7. Terminate all on site. Roger that. Then there was radio silence. I kind of regret looking over as he grabbed it though, because I realised how tired I am, but I'm not crazy. TD's face wasn't there anymore. It was a mass of flesh and writhing muscles. Two grotesque horns were burrowed in his forehead. As I blinked, his face had changed to the vaguely aged look I was familiar with. I have to go for now. Cerebrus has just arrived, but can any of you please tell me, what the fuck was I just locked in a room with? Edit, I just noticed I posted this as I keep people in cages. That was a typo, it's uh, it's been a stressful few days. Followed by a message left. Can you encode it? Oh my god, I so enjoyed that story. Oh, I do love a no sleep story, but what was TD? Was he the man behind this? There's so many questions around this. If you did enjoy this story, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and that notification bell. And I will see you in the next one. Much love guys.